Hello everybody, Jamie the Board Game Man, and today we're looking at a card game from the year 2018. It's by Lookout Spiel Games, Ten ages 10 and up, and it is a 2-4 to four player game. It is called Peep Mots, otherwise known as Little Songbirds. Pretty much what you're doing is you're feeding birds at a bird feeder. Uh, the cards are 1-6, to six, and depending on what number you place down, if it's higher than the bird that's at the feeder, you would take that bird, that bird takes over the feeder, you would subtract the, the amount between the two. Say there was a four at the feeder, you place a six. The difference is two. So you'd see four different seeds up on top. You go one, two. You take that second card. And uh, depending on how many little eggs are on there, the eggs count as points. Those get scored at the end of the game. There's also two bad cards in the game. Squirrels and crows. They will wreak havoc on your game. So when, once those are drawn from the seed pile, you'll see what happens when I show you in the tutorial. Is it a good game? Well, let's find out. Let's head on over to the gamers table where I'm going to show you how to play Peep Mots. All right, here we are at the gaming table with Peep Mots. Let's take a look. All right, so here we have the instruction booklet that comes with the game. You also have bird cards, you have the seed cards, you have the feeder, and then you have a start player card. And the object of the game is you're trying to get the most points. And how you do that is you're gathering up birds and seeds, and whoever has the most points at the end wins the game. So, it is a two to four player game. <clears throat> so if you have three or more players... Um, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and add these four seed cards and this crow. Obviously, if you have two players, then you're going to take these cards out. I'm going to go ahead and show you a quick little two-player game. So what I did was these cards have little three pluses on them. You can see real up close there, see three plus? So you're going to take the four seed cards and the one crow card out of the deck um, when you have three or more players. If you have a two-player game, then what you're going to do is you're going to take one entire species out of the deck. Let's just say sparrows. You're going to go through and you're going to take all the sparrows out of the game. Just one species you'll take out in a two-player game. Three or four, you're going to play with them all. All right, let's go ahead. Oh, and, and the feeder, if it is a two-to-player, two-to-three-player game, then you'll have two of the feeders out here. But if you have a four-player game, you're going to flip this over and you're actually going to end up with three. So that's pretty cool. You have three rows of birds going on, where if you have a two to three player, you're only going to have two. All right, let's go ahead and get this set up. All right, so I had the game set up as a two player. Let me go ahead and go over what we're looking at here. First of all, each player is going to be drawn four cards. Obviously, these will be in your hand. They would not be face up, but just for these purposes, I went ahead and showed you. So each player starts off with four birds in their hand. The last person to see a songbird becomes the first player. I'm going to go ahead and say I was. And you're also going to put the feeder. It's going to determine how many players you have. We have two player games, so it's going to be like this. Like I said in the intro there, um, if you have a four player game, you'll actually have three birds starting off here. But since we have a two to three player game, you're going to go ahead and draw two birds and place them on either side of the feeder. These are the birds that are actually in the feeder eating the seed. Okay. You also place four seed cards out here and you'll put the draw deck up here. These are extra points that you get at the end of the game. You'll see there's eggs on the bottom. Those are the points. So if you grab this amount of seeds, you will get three points for it. Same with this one, you'll get two points for it because there's two eggs and so on. This one has one egg, so you get one point for this, okay? You're also gonna put your draw pile of birds and you're gonna place three of them face up out here. So when it comes to drawing back up to four cards, you can decide whether you want to take one of these, or you can just draw blindly from the deck. And that's pretty much the setup of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and go first. I'm going to look at my birds that I have in my hand. And each bird is numbered one through six. Okay. The object of the game, what you're trying to do, is how you get points is actually getting seeds. That's one way to get points. And also having the most of one species. When you get one of most species, you'll see there are eggs in the bottom of the card here. If you, like, for instance, in this one, this is a, a chaffinch. If I get the most chaffinches in my, in my tableau, I will add up all the eggs for that species, and I get that amount of points. Also, you will see 
Like for instance, oh, I actually got a pair right here. If you look closely at these two, these are the green finches. You see one is a male and one is a female. If you end up getting a pair of the same species, male and female, you get five points for that. Every time you, you put a card in your tableau, obviously everything is always kept face up. So as soon as I get a pair here, I can go ahead and place the cards like this, and that will show that I have a pair. And usually if I have two of the same, uh, same sex there, I usually just kind of do like this. That way I can kind of see. And then once I get a pair, I can go ahead and place them together like so. I mean, you can do it either way you want to do it. That's kind of how I do it when I play. All right. Now, the numbers mean a lot. All of them are numbered one to six. If I were to place a card like this, we have a four on either side here. Okay. That's the power number, I guess you could say, of the bird that's eating the feed. In order for you to get this bird here, you want to place a number higher than this bird. So, for instance, I have a 5 here. So, what happens is I can place a 5 here. Okay. I will look at the difference. There's a 4 and a 5. So, 5 minus 4 is 1. I would go up here and I would go up the number of spaces of the difference of the card. So, in this case, it's 1. So, I go up 1. I get these seeds, which is worth 3 points. And I place it face down in my score pile here. Okay. And that's how that works. Then, what you're going to do is you're going to slide these down like so. And you'll go ahead and draw the next card. You're going to take this bird into your possession, in your tableau. And I'll put this face up right like this. Then next what I would do is I'll go ahead and bring this bird up to the feeder. Now this bird <clears throat> is feeding in the feeder. Okay. Now I have three cards in my hand so I can draw one more card. So let's just say, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and take the Amsel. So I take the Amsel, I put that in my possession, I go ahead and redraw, and we now have a Sparrow that has been added to the draw pile. So now I am done with my turn. That is one of my turns. This player looks at their birds, and they can go on either side. It doesn't matter what side it is, you can go either side. And let's just say he goes, you know what, I'm going to go for, because I have a green finch here, I'm going to go for that green finch, because I have it, one right here. So he takes this Amsel, He's going to go ahead and place the Amsel right here. There's a difference of one. So he's going to take the very first card from the bottom, and that puts his face down in front of him. Okay. These get slit. You slide these down. Okay. And, oh, we have a crow. Okay. So the crows and squirrels are bad in this game. So what you'll do is you're going to place this next to the bottom seed card. Okay. And so on. All right. Then you would draw the next card and place it right here, okay? All right, and then, of course, he's going to take this green finch. He's going to place it in his tableau down here. And now this card takes over right like so. And then what he's going to do is he has three cards in his hand. He's going to go ahead and draw back up to four, whether he wants to take one from here or take one from here. Let's see. Well, I have this green finch here. I'm going to go ahead and take this one here, okay? So he goes ahead and takes this, and his turn is over. Now I'm going to show you a scenario Or let's just say I'm going to put a lower number here. Let's just say I want to play this number two green finch. Okay. I place this here. It is not larger than that number. So this bird cannot overpower this bird to get to the feeder because he has a lower number. So what, ha what, do what happens here? Well, first of all, I'm not going to take this bird and I'm not going to take any seeds. Okay. The num the card that you put down here, I put a 2 here, all right? The only card you can place in your tableau, I almost forgot this rule, is equal to or lower than the number that you place down. So, for instance, I placed a 2 here. So, any 2 or 1 cards are the only ones I am allowed to put in my tableau. Well, luckily, I have a 1 green finch. So, this one I can place in my tableau, Okay. And that's how that works. But it must be either equal to or lower than that number you place down. If you don't have a, a card that has that number, well, you don't get anything. You just draw back up to your cards, and that's it. Okay? Okay, I have two cards to, uh, to draw back up to. This gets immediately replaced. Okay? And now I get to place up to two cards. I'm going to go ahead and take... Uh, let's I'll take a Sparrow. All right? Then you replace it. 
And, uh, another sparrow. I'm going to take that sparrow. Okay. And now that's all replaced like so. And then my turn is over. So that's what happens when you have a lower card. You can actually play a bird in your hand, but it must be equal to or lower than that number, and you get to place it in your tableau. Okay. So let's talk about these bad cards. Here is the crow. The crow scares off one of the birds in your tableau. So let's just say, on my turn, now these cards end up adding up. Let's just say this player here. Let's, let's show you how that works. Let's see. If, okay, good. I do have it. So let's say this player plays a 6. We already have a 5 here. So he plays this. Okay. The difference is 1. 5 and 6 is 1. If you end up grabbing the seed that has a bad card next to it, not only do you take the seeds, but you take the bad card as well. He would take this one, place it in a scoring pile. Now he has to play the crow. The crow scares off one of your birds in your tableau. Okay. Now the key is, later on in the game, obviously you're going to have multiples. Let's just say I had this here. Let's just say I had these down in my tableau here. If you get a crow, the one bird that he scares away must be in the group that you have the most of. So in this case, if I had one yellow hammer, one bullfinch, but I had two of these green finches, I would have to get rid of one of these green finches. If you have one of each, then obviously just choose any one of these, and they get placed in a discard pile off, off the, uh, the game board. These get slid down, okay? And the, the crow now becomes out of the game. This is now discarded and out of the game, okay? And then I would go ahead and draw back up to my four cards, and then that is taken care of, okay? Now, the squirrel. Dun, dun, dun. Let's talk about the squirrel. So you get the squirrel. You're going to go ahead and keep replacing until you get the four cards. Then you place the squirrel right here. So obviously, once again, actually, he would take, end up taking this card and say, let's just say he got rid of this one, okay? Now, and then this card would come up here. <clears throat> if you get a squirrel, what happens is the seeds that you have in your hand, let's just say I have a couple more of these in my hand here. Let's just say I had four of these cards, okay? And they're all seeds, okay? What happens is you're going to take your seeds, you're going to shuffle them up, and you're going to have someone draw two. You see here it says minus two seeds. You will lose two seed cards. So that squirrel is, he's going to take off with your seeds here. So I'll say a player grabs these two. These two are out of the game. I just lost two points. These go in the discard pile. The squirrel is now out. Actually, I'll probably end up taking this. Um, and then the squirrel, and I, that would actually be, end up being in my hand as they, they get the draw. And the squirrel is now out of the game. The squirrel is now taken care of. These get slid down like so, and then you draw a fourth card, okay? And that's how that works. You, you put the seeds back in your hand, and so on. Now let's just say here, like in this for instance here, we got a five here, and you only got a two. So that's my turn. I'm going to look at my four cards here. These are out of the game here, Okay. And let's just say, I'm going to go ahead and add a six. All right. So now I add this card like so. Now these add up to eight. This is five. So now I'm finally, I'm going to go ahead and get this chaff inch. Okay. And the difference is three. Eight minus five is three. So I will take this card. He goes into my tableau. Okay. One, two, three. I'm going to take the third card up. I get this C card. Place that here. Slide this down. Draw another card like so. Now, what happens here is the highest number card will obviously take over the seed. You can't have the two take it over the... You can't do that because he's, he's bigger than this guy. So what happens is you're going to take this and place it by the feeder. And this becomes like this. Now, say you have a number of cards over here. Let's just say you had this. All right, and then you had a five here. All right, now what happens here, eight and 10, you would have four, so you would take the fourth card. Now what happens is, say you get a real big number, say I had a six, let's borrow a six from somewhere, I'm gonna borrow this six, and place this here, okay? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I need that there. There we go, that's what I wanted to do. So let's just say I added a six to it. Now we're at nine, 11 minus six is five. What happens here? I only have four C cards. You would take the top card from the deck. 
So anything above the four as a difference will be taken from the top deck. You would show everybody the card. In this case, I would get one point, and that's why I would end up taking into my tableau, okay? Or my point, okay? Then I would take the blackbird. He is now mine. I would place him into my tableau down here. And the highest card would take over the feeder, okay? These two cards still stay here. Now, let's just say there was a chain reaction. And let's just say it was still higher. Let's just say for some odd reason, I had such a big card that it took over and I still have more. I have seven minus six is one. Guess what? I get to do that again. I get to take this card and the difference is one. So I would take the one from the bottom there, take my two points, okay? I would take the card and now I have a pair, which is great. I have a male and a female here, so I get five points for that, okay? Hopefully it doesn't get taken away by a crow because obviously the crow has to take the most of that you have in one card, okay? It's not solidified. Once you get a pair, it's not solid. You got you still might have to, to get rid of it because of a crow, all right? The five would take over the seed, the feeder. These would slide down like usual. Oh, and we got a squirrel. So the squirrel would be placed here, and the next one would be a one, okay? And that's how that would work. And, of course, the next player that has one difference would take this, and then I'd have to take care of of getting rid of two seed cards, okay? And like I said, the, the crow takes away, let's see, let me, get, let me go over that one more time here. The crow takes away one of your birds. If It scares one of your birds away, but it has to be in a group where you have the most of. And if there's a tie like this, then you just choose one of them. And they get discarded. The crow gets discarded as well, and so on, okay? And that's pretty much how that works. Then this, and if you land with this, obviously you take this, then you have to have someone draw two cards out of your hand. The squirrel goes out of play. You slide these down like usual, and there you go, okay? And that's pretty much how you play the game. Um, you keep play, laying down your cards. If you don't have enough, like a lower card, you would actually take one out of your card hand. Let me go back to one here. But the number has to be either equal to or lower than this card here. So I would have to take the one because everything else is higher. I could place that in my tableau here, okay? But I don't take the card, okay? That's the thing. And then I can draw from here or I can draw from here, go back up to four cards, okay? End soaring. Let's see, let you know what triggers the end of the game here. Let's go ahead and put a card here. What triggers the end of the game is when you can no longer draw from the seed pile. <clears throat> All these cards are out, okay? Once the last player puts that card down there, it triggers the end of the game when you can no longer, well, actually, when, once you have four here, then you, once you can no longer draw from the draw pile, that's when it triggers the game. And then depending on who the start player is, everyone has the same amount of turns. So if I was the one that finished the game, then player two would have one final play. Or if it's a three or four player game, obviously everyone else would have one final turn until it comes back to me because I'm the start player and the game would end. That's when the end scoring, you're going to count up all your seeds, all the eggs that you have here. You're going to count them all up, count all the eggs. You're also going to go ahead and look at each other's species and see how many, you know, who has the most of what. So if, let's just say I had the most of the yellow hammers. I would get three points, two eggs, one egg. I would get three points for these. And I would also, since I had a pair, you can see I have a male and female, I would get five points for this. Uh, pair as well. So this ended up being an eight point spread right here just from having these two. Let's just say I had the most green finches. I would get, okay, it's a pair, it's a male and female, and I also get four points, three and one. So I would get nine points total just for these two cards alone. If I don't have the most chaffinches here, like say this player had, you know, maybe two of them, let's see, maybe they had like three in their possession here, okay. I would get no points for this bird. Nothing for this bird whatsoever. And say I had another one, you know, like a like a blackbird or something, I would not get any points for that if anybody had more than I had. If you have a tie, let's just say I had three blue, you know, I have three chaffinches and they had three chaffinches, well, then you go ahead and, and total up the eggs there. You actually get to share the points, okay? That's how that works. Now, at the end scoring, if there is a tie, 
If there's a tie, then it depends on how many groups you have. How many groups you have, and if you uh, still have a tie, then you share the victory, okay? But say I had maybe two of these groups. I mean, this person only had one, well, then I would break the tiebreaker because I have two pairs here, and I would end up winning the game. And that, my friends, is Pete Mott's. So let's head on over to the game room, and I will give you my final thoughts. All right, so my final thoughts on Peep Mots. I like this game. I, I like the way the cards look. They're really, really gorgeous. I also like that you're, I mean, there's a little math involved, which you know, I mean, in previous episodes, I really enjoy math. Now, th the thing is, I want to say, don't let the math scare you away from the game. It's just a little subtraction. That's all you got to do. And then you're adding up all your points at the end of the game like you do with most games. So don't, I mean, it's not going to be algebra. There's going to be no multiplication or division or anything like that. It's just a simple, okay, four, six, okay, that's two. Okay, one, two, take the two. It's very easy. So a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like math. Ah. No, it's very simple math. All you're doing is subtracting the number from the feeder to the birds that are on waiting in line. And you do the, the difference. That's all it really is. And then you just go one, two, three. Okay, boom. Okay, you're done. So, but it's, it's very simple. I like the way you try to pair up birds, male and female. Each one of those pairs give you five points at the end of the game. And also, I do like the seeds where you have to do the difference. And then you have to, but sometimes you really got to do the math because you're like, okay, if I put this bird down, it's going to be two, but I got to take that squirrel. Or the difference is one, ah, there's a crow there. I don't, do I want to take the crow? Is it worth it? But if I get that, I get a pair. Okay, so I lose a, lose a bird, but then again, I get a pair. So it's worth it. And you go ahead and go for it. So there's a lot of strategy involved in this game, believe it or not. I mean, you don't think, oh, just put the birds at the feeder. But there's, there's a little bit of strategy involved here. So it's actually pretty cool. And I like that you add up all the points if you have the most amount of that bird. So um, you might be thinking, hey, I got three eggs, three eggs, three eggs, but then you don't have that, uh, enough birds and someone else might have, you know, six sparrows to your four. And you're like, oh, so you don't get any points unless you did any matches of me and male or females. Then you still get the five points for it, but you won't get the total amount of eggs, like the total amount of points you get if you don't have the most about that, that bird. So it's a simple little game. It's fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, let me go ahead and give it a thumbs up here. Let me, here's a thumbs up meter right here. There we go. I definitely like this game. If you can find it, get it. Um, you could probably find it for not that much. I found this over McKay's. I think it was probably, what, about seven bucks? I think I found, I, I don't remember how much it was. Um, but I know it was under 10 for sure. It was probably about six or seven dollars is probably how much I paid for it. Watched a couple videos on it, really liked it, and went back and got it. So I'm glad I got it. It's a fun little game. It's really small, compact. And it's a lot of fun. And it's very, very easy to teach. All right, so that's my review on Peep Mots. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and a comment down below what you think about the game. Maybe you have it. Give me uh, your thoughts on it. Maybe you don't have it. Hopefully, you know, it's a game that's up your alley. Hopefully it's, uh, you know, gave me thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and try that out, see if you can find it. Um, you know, I didn't even look on eBay or any of those other places. I have no idea if any of them are on there. I'm pretty sure they are. Um, and hopefully, you know, you don't have to pay too much for it. Hopefully it's affordable where you can add it to your collection. I highly suggest you do. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I always appreciate your support. And happy gaming.